Welcome to the Missing Links podcast by Lincoln Leads. So many people need help to improve their well-being and often hit barriers to asking for it. In this podcast, we want to normalize and remove those barriers so that everyone can talk openly and feel better. We'll be talking to a variety of people to get their views on what barriers they face. So let's get started. Uh, this is our very first podcast, uh, very first episode of The Missing Link, and we're actually talking to each other. Um, and what I mean by that is myself and Ethan, we work at Lincoln Leeds. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about what we do in a second, but we're actually using this first podcast. Uh, yeah, just to share like how this podcast developed, why we're doing it, give you a bit of a glimpse into the future and, and hopefully get you excited for it. So how are you feeling today, Ethan? I am feeling fresh and feeling excited is it's a new podcast is is new opportunity for us to get out there and, and speak to people i think it's going to be great love it love the enthusiasm um so yeah a bit, a bit of background on the podcast um in fact before i do that let me introduce myself and then it might make a bit more sense so i'm anna quinn martin i'm the service manager for lincoln leads and uh lincoln leads is a citywide free social prescribing service in Leeds, funnily enough. Um, and yeah, I run the ship. So being the service manager, I look after the service sort of end to end. We have about a team of 50 working in this service. Um, and basically we're here to um, help people with whatever practical or emotional problems they have that might be affecting their life. So if they struggling with money or um, debt, uh, addiction issues, might be mental health issues. It might be that they're lonely or isolated and want to have more access to their community. Um, They might want to make a friend. They might need to sort out something to do with their housing. All of those things are really complicated and difficult. um, And often people don't know where to start. So what they would do is they would come to Lincoln Leeds, um, either by being referred in by a GP or someone at their practice, another medical professional, someone else in the third sector, another service, friends, family, or they can refer themselves. And they come to us, we give them a worker, uh, we call them wellbeing coordinators, amazing people. Um, And they can basically work with that person, talk to them about what they need. And and yeah, it makes a big difference to people's lives. So that's what I do. Ethan, do you wanna tell tell the crowd uh, of, of thousands of people that are listening, <laughs> what it is that you do? Yeah, so uh, I'm Ethan Foster, one of the senior wellbeing coordinators that Anna just mentioned for Lincoln Leeds, and and my role is a, a bit of a hybrid. You know, I have a caseload of of people that come through the service that are looking for help and support, and I try my best to link them to those services out there and, and connect them to their community. Um, but I also help the team as a whole. So I help you with this project, for instance, <laughs> or uh, the managers with other uh, projects that we think will benefit the service and, and move it forward. Really fun role. I love helping people, but I also love this stuff. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Love it. I love the enthusiasm, Ethan. Um, yeah, and, and well done for not saying I do the stuff that the managers delegate to me because it isn't like that. We're, a, we're one team and we love working together. We actually do love it. Well, I, you know, maybe I'm kidding myself, but I think we love working together. Um, and yeah, so we're now doing this podcast and, and it came about in a bit of a funny way. So we have a people's voice group, which is ex-clients who are who have been through our service, who have benefited from our service, who have volunteered to come and work with us to just look at, you know, what can we improve? What can we do better? Because we're always wanting to improve what we do in our service. Um, And one of the things that we were talking to us about was, you know, how how we get into different communities, particularly how do we get in front of young people? Um, And we came up with the idea of having a podcast, which is really exciting because I'm channeling my inner Brené Brown, who (laughs) I will no doubt mention a billion times. Um, And I actually recorded a a podcast recently for someone else and yeah, totally living the dream. Um, And Ethan was also equally up for it. So we've been kind of developing it and and the people's voice group have actually helped us to develop the questions. So the idea behind the podcast, I mean, there's, there's loads of bits to it, I guess, but one of the core things that the people's voice group helped us to do was to develop four simple questions that we're going to ask a range of people. So this because we'll be asking the same questions to different people we should get different perspectives um and they're all about really um breaking down the barriers of a why is it so difficult for people to realize that they need help 
um, and B, like normalising the fact that it's okay to ask for help. Because I don't know about you, Ethan, but I feel like that's a massive barrier. Like, especially, I think it's so difficult for people to realise that first of all, that they need some help, but then even when they've realized that asking for it, it's, it's tough. Have you, have you had that experience yourself or have you had that experience with your clients? I think both personally and professionally, it is, it is a constant experience. I think life is challenging and it's fast paced and it, it gets ahead of us very quickly. And sometimes, like you say, we don't even realize that we, we are suffering in our well-being and that we, we need that help to begin with. And then there's something about reaching out to other people and asking for it that can just be such a big challenge for, for a variety of different reasons. But it's really about just trying to reduce that because at the end of the day, if we can be there for one another, then surely that's that's better for everyone. So that's that's my kind of, like I say, personal experience of it as well. Yeah. I think um, we should I was just say we should have some sort of drinking game with the amount of times I mentioned Brené Brown, but that's probably not a good thing for us to advise. Maybe we could do like a have a drink of fresh, healthy juice drinking game. That'd be a much better thing for us to suggest. But she does talk about the fact that like societally, men are expected to be strong. And this is like a big generalization, but this is kind of what her research is. Men are expected to be strong. Okay, so let's... Let's unpin that for a minute. Definitely doesn't mean asking for help, does it? And women are expected to do everything perfectly and be beautiful and look like it's not at all a problem, which again, is just another way of saying not asking for help. So, and you know, Instagram, Facebook and all these things, it's about like showing your best life, isn't it? And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's quite a high standard to live up to. So I think when people are struggling, and I've definitely felt this myself, to, to say to someone, oh, I'm finding life a bit hard right now it feels like a much bigger deal than it should be. Because I think you'd find most people, if they were being honest, would be like, yeah, me too. And it's really powerful when someone says to you, yeah, I feel the same. Or yeah, I find that hard as well. Because it kind of normalizes it and it makes you feel okay about it. Because life's really difficult, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I mean, there's a couple of really great points you said there in terms of um, even like social media. I mean, me personally, I, I took a step away from that because I just found it so... We're not necessarily toxic, but just like I say, people have this image of their best life and we naturally compare and we can naturally think people are doing better than we are. And that that's one of these barriers that we were mentioning about asking for help because we think, well, no one else needs help. So why why do I need it? Yeah. Um, and like I said, that's it's it just needed I needed personally some some time away from that. And I can see why other people struggle or why we as a society are starting to struggle with this. Yeah, definitely. And I think the comparison thing is huge as well. You know, you look at people and I don't know, they've just bought a house or they've just got married or I don't know, they just had a great holiday or and you look at these people and you think, ah, well, they've got it nailed. They're not struggling with anything. They're sorted. And a lot of people probably like probably unknowingly go around acting like they're totally fine as well. Like people put on this armor, don't they, of, I am fine. Don't look too close. Um, When in actual fact, most people, not necessarily all the time, but most people struggle with things throughout their lives. And and sometimes those things are worse and and sometimes are better. But it's almost like we're meant to pretend that everything's okay. Um, And they're definitely not. I mean, we've got hundreds and hundreds of people coming through our service. And it's everyone from like, you know, really complicated debt, money, addiction, isolation, housing, like all these things right up to, you know, really lovely 85 year old lady who is affluent, has a nice house, Mm -hmm. but hasn't seen anyone in three months. And, and, you know, that her struggles are as real for her as it would be for anybody else. And, 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 you know, just being lonely I mean, it's not just, is it? Like being lonely is a massive thing. We're social beings, aren't we? We're meant to be with each other. Mm. So, you know, people coming into our service, we can really help with anything. I mean, we can't perform miracles, obviously. I never want to <laughs> make it sound <laughs> like we can snap our fingers. But in the in the three or four, you know, well, it depends how long you work with us. Some people work with us a few weeks. Sometimes it's a few months. But we can, we really change people's. I mean, I'm saying we, you guys, you guys do the hard work. <laughs> Are there any 
particular, I'm just throwing you under the bus here because I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any good examples? Obviously, you can't give anything away details wise, but just a couple of examples of, of things that you've done that have really transformed people's lives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's like I said, there's plenty of different stories out there of, of different people and what they've they've struggled with. I mean, one that recently comes to mind was um, I I got a a call very randomly, a number that uh, at the time I, I didn't quite recognise. Thought oh, this this is strange. Um, and in our line of work, you often do get un, unknown numbers, you know, from a variety of people calling. So I answered it, and it was actually a, a previous uh, client of mine who wanted to ring back. Um, I've I worked with this lady months months ago um, during the pandemic, and she was really struggling with uh, her housing, just being mm. in this environment that wasn't meeting her needs. Just had this this mental impact on her as well, where she just felt so overwhelmed with it, as if she had didn't have even a safe space to to be around. Mm. You know, they say you know our, our home is is our kingdom. For her, it just wasn't. It wasn't good. It was more like like a prison. Um, now we we mentioned earlier that we're not miracle workers, so you know it's it's not like I could have given her a house. I would have loved to have been able to do that and and to just say right, these are the new keys here to your property. But what I did do was help her navigate the system, which is is confusing. It, there's so much out there. There's so much to try to know and, and, and no one makes it very, very obvious sometimes. So it was just making sure that she knew the system. She got set up and registered to start bidding on properties, teaching her the skills to, to actually bid and, and how to use that. So a little bit of that digital inclusion stuff mm. and, and, mainly just helping her with the motivation and, and and helping her keep an eye on the prize, which is, yes, this is going to be a long process. We're, we're both aware of this. It's not going to be enjoyable, but the aim at the end is to improve things, to change the situation that you are in now. And we we got her off on, on that. And I left her with this message that, right, you know what to do. Uh, you trust in your own skills. Go and, Go and do it. Go and, and keep bidding and and get that property. Oh, that's brilliant. So um, as I said, she, she gave me a, a call back from this unknown number. This was months later, and she wanted to call me and say, Thank you. You've I've I've got the property now. And I know you're not housing work. I know you you didn't specifically give me the property, but you did give me the skills, the motivation, the the knowledge to get there. And that really, for me, really highlighted what we do is it's a subtle thing but it's something that's so important and it it, it's connecting people it's teaching people to empower themselves trust themselves know what's out there and connecting the dots whether that be skills people or or just general motivation um so that's that's probably my best example that that comes to my mind i just showed you though doesn't it i mean like you had no idea the impact i mean you obviously knew what you had done for that person but you you've no idea the long-term impact and yeah, I just think that's incredible, and and there's so much what you just said there that really highlights why our service is necessary. And I think one of the things I always try to explain to people is it's okay. I mean, there's loads of amazing services and community groups and leads, but if you're struggling, you know, you don't necessarily know which one to go to. You might not have the literacy skills. You might not speak English. You might, you know, there's loads of barriers in the way, right? Um, yeah. If you're anxious, if you're depressed, you're not going to know necessarily who to go to. And even if you do, like if you don't quite meet their criteria, they might say they can't help you. And then what do you do next? So having us assign you a wellbeing coordinator just means that, you know, we can take that person through that process. And like you say, it's about empowering them. You know, we're not here to like rescue people or, you know, do anything they don't want to do. It's about like that person is in control, aren't they? But we can support and motivate them and ultimately set them up for future success in a really short period of time. Um, I mean, the feedback we get from clients is, is brilliant. You know, um, I'm not just saying that as a biased service manager, you know, I I read it all the time. Um, and that's just one person that you've helped out of, you know, thousands in your time here. Like what an amazing job. I I think you guys are incredible. So the questions that, that the people's voice group helped us to come up with, like I said, the four questions, we're going to ask different people. So we're going to talk to our staff. We're going to talk to 
partners that work with us. We're going to talk to doctors that work with us. We're going to talk to ex-clients and current clients. Um, anyone who will have a chat with us, basically. Anyone who's connected to the service. Um, and the reason we picked these four questions um, was basically because we wanted them to be questions that anyone would be able to answer, but I guess that their unique perspective, both from their own life, but maybe from the jobs they do or their experience with the service, would probably give us slightly different answers. And so hopefully what, what you'll hear if you, if you listen to our podcast, which we hope you do, is something for everyone. Uh, and each week, hopefully, little glimmers of insights maybe that will be useful to you And I definitely, just to reiterate, like I feel there's a lot of power in normalizing, okay, I feel like this, someone else feels like this. That means that it's okay for me to feel like this. Do you know what I mean, Ethan? Like if you think you're the only person dealing with something, Mm -hmm. it can feel quite lonely or you can think, oh, I shouldn't be like this. Yeah. But other people struggle too, right? Yeah, 100%. And I think, like we said, I think at the beginning of this podcast, that is the key to it, is, is normalising it and just saying, you know, it's okay not to be okay. And let's let's talk about that because that is the first step to accepting the situation I'm in and being able to finally see what's around me and, and move forward with it. Because I think that's what the issue is. It's getting overwhelmed and things getting on top of us and that weight being something hard to to move past but if we we talk yeah. about it that starts to take some of that weight it gives it a little bit to the people you're speaking to and, and we, we share the load and we improve together yeah. and don't you think people also think it has to be loads of really terrible things when in actual fact like just day-to-day life can be a struggle sometimes yeah so you don't have to like rack up loads of issues to get help like it might just be one or two things that are bothering you um but they're really bothering you they're really affecting you i think sometimes people think it's like having a broken leg isn't it if you've got a broken leg everyone can see you've got a broken leg you need help but with how we feel about things it doesn't have to even be mental health as such it can just be it could just be i'm just feeling a bit rubbish i'm just finding this a bit hard it doesn't have to be loads and loads of issues. Sometimes it is for people and that's when it's got really difficult and overwhelming for them. But even a couple of things can be really overwhelming if they're things that you find tricky. So I think as well, like the normalization, normalization, is that word? the normalizing of it is, you know, it doesn't even have to be that bad because again, if you're saying, if, you, if you're worrying about how bad it is, you're comparing it to other people, right? You're saying, well, I might be really struggling with this, but this person's dealing with something much bigger. And it's like, well, you know, they're dealing with that. That's their stuff. It doesn't stop how you're feeling about your situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. definitely. No, no, all, no. (laughs) And it's, it's, you know, we're all on our own journey. And we, it's so hard to say like how much one thing affects us or not. And, And to be honest, life is, is just stressful. It's just hard to be, a, a human nowadays so yeah yeah let's let's talk about it let's open up and let's not judge it let's just share it share our stories and and go from there should we give the viewers no not viewers that's wrong because i can't <laughs> see it the listeners um should we give them an insight into the questions because i'm sure they're absolutely yeah. busting a gut now <laughs> so <laughs> the first question we've got is what does good mental health or happiness look like to you um I think that's a really great question because it's going to open up, I guess, like what are people looking for in themselves that makes them happy? And I know like, you know, we'd all like to win the lottery and we think that that would make us happy, but actually day-to-day happiness looks quite different for different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's such like a, a broad term as well you know what is happiness but we're not trying to define that we're trying to define what it's like for you for as a person you know what is yeah good men's health what is happiness for you and, and what does that mean yeah and because for me like I'm most happy in the real simple moments of life you know when mm-hmm. when my dog um does something silly like sometimes he yawns and he makes this little noise like that. There's so much joy in that moment. And that's such a silly little thing. Well, it's yeah. not silly, is it? It's a thing that brings me joy from walking him or 
having a good connection with like it's it's these things that to me are, are happiness but they're not always the things I'm going after you know so I think there's a conflict so it'll be really interesting to hear what people have got to say about that mm-hmm. yeah definitely and and you, it's interesting that you say they're about what we choose to go after and what we don't and, and sometimes what we, we have to go after, you know, we, we understand that you have to pay the bills and you have to look after your children and your family and, and just keep on top of, of all these responsibilities. But like you said, they're finding those little pure moments of things that actually do bring you joy and recognizing that is just a, a really big deal for your mental health generally, I think. Hmm. And anything that's, you know, is a problem, practical or emotional is going to be, it's going to be detrimental to that no matter what it is. So I think it leads us nicely to the next question. So the next question is what barriers are there for asking for help? Um, Cause I think, like I said earlier, one thing is you realize you need help full stop. That's difficult. Like admitting that to yourself. Second thing is, well, okay. Now I've decided I need help. How do I get it? Like, I think that's huge, whether it's looking for a counsellor or looking for the right service or mm. knowing which websites go to, having credit on your phone so that you can even, you know, make a call or, you know, the barriers will be very different for different people. Um, and some of them will be like emotional barriers. So mm-hmm. pride, you know, not wanting to say that I need help can be a barrier and then it can be right down to the practical stuff. And I think we do both, don't we, at Lincoln Leeds? Like, I think we help Mm -hmm. with the practical stuff, definitely. But also, I think we offer reassurance to people, don't we, that Mm -hmm. it's okay to be having these conversations, asking for help, it's okay to be struggling. Yeah, definitely. 100%. And I think sometimes that's an element of it that is sometimes overlooked and not often thought as as a barrier i think people see the practical stuff because it's a physical object in front of them and think oh they, if, if only i could get more money if only i could change this situation then i'll be happy and it's it's realizing that actually there's, there's not all the time there's also a little bit of you in that and and well how do you feel about this barrier and how do you feel about you know, the change that you're going to make, you know, where do you want to be when this is all over and who do you want to mm. be when all this is over? Um, and and that really does bring up a lot of very personal and emotional kind of barriers for ourselves. I mean, we mentioned mm. earlier about um, kind of masculinity and, you know, this image of being strong and, and asking for help. And that's something I, I personally dealt with throughout my life. And, and mm. it, it can be a challenge and, and it sounds silly when you speak out loud, but that's, that's the power of, of sharing is, is, is being able to identify what it is and, and put a word on it and just think, okay, now I can start making steps towards reducing that barrier and, and working on it with the help of friendly face, which is us, you know, your, yeah, your wellbeing coordinator. Yeah. Cause you, you don't always, even know what these barriers are until you start talking and normalizing them and speaking about them and and someone else can help you to understand them as well. But then it's also like, these things are probably ingrained in you, you know, from your childhood, from the society you grew up in, Mm -hmm. you know, if you were taught to um, not talk about feelings, for example, then that could be something that really affects you later on in line. So yeah, like we said, these barriers can be, can be very extensive and, and different. I'm, I'm really interested to hear what people say about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, next question is what happens when you share your story or your problems with someone? I think that's going to be so interesting. I wonder how many people are going to say, you know, that they haven't, maybe haven't even done that or, or haven't done yeah. it much or, you know, they might've only done it once or twice in the whole life. And so those, memories of it are really powerful and then I'm sure we'll have other people who do it all the time so it, yeah I'm excited to, to hear what people say about that yeah me too it's such an interesting question because mm. not only does it say you know what happens you know physically in, in reaction to when you share your story um, but you know what are the problems as well and I think it's quite some of the barriers there's trying to identify you know what what is actually happening for you for you are you maybe not sharing enough do you feel as if you 
you're overshare, undershare? Do you feel as if you're being judged when you share? Mm. Yeah, because uh, it might actually, sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. You just made me think it might actually be that sometimes if they share their story with the wrong person, yeah, then that is unhelpful. Because some people, I think particularly if they're connected to you, mm-hmm. because they care about you, actually sharing with some people can have the opposite effect because they don't, it's almost like, and, and they do it subconsciously, but they almost go straight into yeah. how they feel about you being in pain. Um, so sometimes it's, yeah, it, it's when you've shared it with someone who's impartial or, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I, I think it'll be really interesting what people say about that. Definitely, definitely. It's such a multi-layered kind of question and, and it will really be a good reflection of, because again, the key purpose of this podcast is to speak to different people and get different stories and, and see the things are different about each other, but also the things that we share in common. And I think that question is a really good one for, for showing that. Yeah. And I think what's cool about it is that we're not saying we're the expert on all of these things. That's why we're asking loads of different people because, you know, we're all informed by the things that we hear, say, do, listen, experience, but other people will have got a whole other set of experiences that we can learn from as well. So it's going to be really nice. Ethan and I are going to share the responsibility of hosting for the first few weeks and then hopefully some of our wider team are going to get involved as well. Um, and yeah, I, I'm excited to to learn, you know. Yeah. Um, I was about to quote Brené Brown again, but I won't. Um, <laughs> I'm sure she been listening to this too. <laughs> I tried to tag her in the last podcast and, uh, and, and hope she listened to it, but I've, I've got a feeling she might not have done. Um, and then the last question is, would anything stop you from sharing your story? And again, I think that'll follow on nicely from the one before, but anything that's going to stop you is, you know, potentially really significant. So that I think that'll help us as a service, it'll help us to like inform our practice going forward, but it'll also help people to reflect for themselves. I think they'll be surprised we're asking that, although not now because we've told them, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it'll, I think it'll tap into some interesting things when we ask that question. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's, Again, a, a multi-layer to the question. There's a part for us where we gain the insight as, as a service as to why is the people are struggling with, why is stopping them from achieving what they want to achieve. But also it's just good to, again, bring you back to the person's story. And I, I, my my aim for this podcast is to really have each person, each episode be a bit of a reflection of their life, their story and and what they've been struggling with. So that hopefully others in a similar situation can, can see that and connect and and reach out and and get that spot they need. And again, another great question to do that. Yeah. So I think, you know, by now people must be absolutely chomping at the bit to listen to the podcast going forward. I mean, why wouldn't they? So we should probably leave an air of mystery there now. (laughs) Um, We're hoping to launch this. January, right? So by the yeah. time you listen to this, it should be January. It'll be the new year. Goodness knows where we'll be. Mm-hmm. Um, we're aiming to get it out weekly. You know, we'll do our best. Um, we're a busy service, but it's definitely our intention. I better thank Ethan in advance because, as always, he's brilliant and is massively supporting oh, with this. Um, so, yeah, and thanks just for doing this first one with me because it's, I mean, I love chatting to you anyway, but it's just felt like a really nice connection. Um, And, you know, I'm excited to, to hear what other people have got to say. So normally at this point we'd, we thank our guests, but I'll thank you, Ethan. And I'll thank you, Anna. (laughs) I'll thank you. Thank you. That wasn't even pre-rehearsed. We are just this cheesy in real life. So yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, If you are one of our team, I just want to say thank you again so much for the work you do because it's honestly for anyone who isn't in our team, it's unbelievable what these guys do. And yeah, we'll get some of them on the podcast soon. Um, if you're interested, if you have a connection with us and you want to um, be on the podcast, be interviewed, then please let us know. Um, go to our website, but I mentioned that www.linkinleads.com. And otherwise, yeah, we, uh, I was about to say we'll see you in the new year, but it will be the new year when you listen to this. So happy new year. Um, and uh, yeah, we hope to see you next time. Thanks, Ethan. Thank you, Anna.
that's it for this week. Massive thank you to our guest. So we hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, if you or someone you know needs help, then contact us at linkingleads.com. Alternatively, you can give us a call on 0113 336 7612. Thanks.